The writing was on the wall for Peloton as it emerged from the highs of the pandemic. The company cut its 2022 earnings forecast by a billion dollars and paused production of bikes and treadmills to cope with a slump in demand. But as early as October of 2020, Narissa Zhang, CEO of the fitness platform The Bright App and writing for Medium.com, was predicting a rough road ahead for the company. The pandemic just sped up their growth, but it just it stopped because nobody else wants it. The price point um, isn't the best. And then you had all these other bikes come in for less, right? And in that article, I gave an example of my friend. She can totally afford a Peloton, but bought one similar. It looks exactly the same, but for $500. But during the pandemic, Peloton had one heck of a ride. It did hit some bumps on the way to that success from its IPO in 2019. A holiday ad that went viral for the wrong reasons. Then there were pandemic delays that drove up its own shipping costs and wait times. And a recall of one of its treadmills following dozens of injuries and the death of a child. But in becoming a huge success during the pandemic, it was inevitable that the company would see its fortunes shift as the world slowly shifts back to something close to normal. Ryan Deffenbaugh is reporter for Crane's New York business. It's an issue that goes beyond <clears throat> A lot of tech companies, the New York tech companies um, as, as well, who you know, saw a lot of demand you know, in 2020 and, and in 2021 as well. So the, the question is, can you build off of that or do you see you know, that start to go away as we return to you know, what will hopefully be more of like a 2019 style of, of life? Netflix is another company considered a stay-at-home stock that gained during the pandemic boom. On the same day Peloton downgraded its prospects, the streaming giant warned investors that subscriber growth would slow during the first quarter of this year, which sent shares down as much as a fifth in value in January. Meeting platform Zoom and even DoorDash were also pandemic darlings that saw their use cool off as meetings went back to in-person, in the office, and people started dining out again. Ted Rossman is senior analyst with Bankrate.com. There's a shift away from these kind of companies. It's kind of not just what have you done for me lately, but what are you going to do for me next? I think that's really the biggest challenge for these companies. Where does the future growth come from after this period of explosive growth? 